Hey yo, in this video I'll show you how SNTS and Paula Temple play when they do their live sets, DJ sets or hybrid, I mean, now everyone call it one way. But yeah, this thing of DJing with Ableton, uh, yeah, I will explain to you how it works. Uh, I tried to record this many times. And always I have some technical issues, so yeah, I will do my best now for the fifth time or whatever. Uh, let's go with it. So yeah, what we know, they do this Ableton thing. It sounds amazing. Um, so yeah, yeah, let's check out what do they do. What I did, I did my research. Actually, I mean, now 2023, I don't know if something changed, but at least... Uh, until 2022, I've seen like all the videos and heard all the sets many times because I, I mean, I like how it sounds. And that was actually the first time that I said like, I want to investigate. Not because they were playing with Ableton. Actually, the first time that it caught my attention was hearing a set and you're realizing that there was like something. I mean, I knew that they were like doing something different. It doesn't sound like playing with CDJs or something else. Um, not because of the audio quality, but because what Ableton allows you to do. And yeah, we will see that. I won't, I don't need to get now much into it. Anyway, let's go. So now you have, if I sing everything this time, you are able to see the screen. Also my uh, 2K. 2K or Keichu, how it's called, Keichu. Yes, so first of all, we're going to talk about um, infrastructure or how it's called. Uh, so what do you need to do this? If you want to play like them, you need Ableton. I guess all Ablertons work for this because you don't need any fancy anything, just the fact that you have like the clips like this. And nothing else. And then uh, the hardware. So you know that sometimes you see things like this. And this, I mean, if you have one of these, you can avoid having an interface because you can like mix internally and go out from here and use this as, as the headphones. And you will have like good quality uh, but they don't do that. They have an interface and they get they get into the Allen and Heath. So, yeah, if you don't have the money like me, you can go like with this. Otherwise, you will have to buy a sound card that has like four stereo outputs, get into an Allen and, an Allen and Heath. And yeah, then you can use the filter from the mixer, which they are like super cool. But yeah, otherwise you can go with this. The thing about this, like playing live, is that um, this, the volume, so the ohms of this is, I mean, they're not good. It sounds like low. So if you have like uh, headphones with uh, lots of ohms, you, I mean, you won't be able to play because the sound will be like too low. And that's a problem. What you can do if you have like a cheap mixer or you don't have the sound card, you go inside the mixer from the output to one channel and then this goes to another channel, which is, which is going to be like your PFL all the time. So you can control the volume there. But I, I won't go uh, any more into it, just be creative. But you don't need a um, sound card apart from this. Also, you don't need this exactly, but this, I mean, it feels good. Uh, Normally, I always like buy MIDI stuff to check it out and see how it works. This works amazing. It's like super comfortable. And the sound quality, I did like blind test and you cannot tell the difference. So it sounds good. And also, well, you will see that this video is going to be long, but that's how it is. I'm not a YouTuber, so this won't be cinematic. Like Patsy from Soprano says. Uh, SNTS, he also used this. And you may ask yourself, like, if you're going to use the Allen and Heath K2, 
you will be missing MIDI sync for this. Yes, I use it uh, without sync and you won't die. I mean, my trick is I will add a video with PostPro, but what I do is the rim shot. <laughs> This one that you probably won't use, go to external out and have this in one in ear so I can sync it before uh, putting the volumes up. So it's like having a DJ thingy, like a player or something, and just sync it like all the time. But still, on Ableton, you can see the BPM. Uh, so you can match it. But even if you match it, it will move. That's the problem, that you have to do adjustments. But... I mean, if you know how to DJ with vinyl, you can do that easily. What else? Uh, yeah, I mean, I use this, and of course, this is a musical decision. As NTS used it, Paula Temple not this much. I think, I mean, it works pretty well because if, I mean, for this type of techno, if you have control of the cymbals, um, it's like having lots of power, I think. Because if you keep like the cymbals going all the time, uh, I don't know if they are the same. It sounds like in in a kind of flow, and then you can choose to remove them. And I don't know. It works for me. Just check if it works for you. Also, if you don't have money for this, you can put in Ableton um, like clips of pre-recorded uh, 16 notes and upbeat high um, yeah hi hats or whatever you need, and have it f in Ableton. You know. You can also do that. It's actually a trick if you don't want to travel with that all the time because it's heavy and big. All right. So let's check the Ableton project. And okay, this is mine. And this is. <coughs> Wait. Okay, now you are seeing the screen, hopefully. So basically what you have, I will be explaining this like slowly. You have here A, B, C. These are for me, it's like channels from a mixer. And then you have the tracks here. Okay, let's see this. Uh, okay, with I have to explain with the K2. So we have it here. I hope you can see it. Uh, now you will be seeming, seeing me touching this row, which is going to be like the play from track one, two, three. This one, I won't explain it right now because this, this is for me for FX Twin FX stuff. Um, but yeah, for now, we're going to use like this for the place. This is volume. This is high pass filter on and off and high shelf. There, there's no on and off, it's on all the time. And then here what I have is gain. If you are like mixing internally, uh, yeah, you will miss that. That's why I prefer like cha uh, having like a simple EQ, 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 and then the gain here and fuck it. And this is like loop for looping. Uh, so yeah, let's check it out. Also, if you notice the um, the rest of the high pass filter is dynamic, so it changes with depending on the volume. Uh, I won't get into this like a lot. If you know about MIDI, generic MIDI, uh, yeah, you can do that yourself. But it, I mean, if you have questions, I can do a video about it. But there's already like a thousand videos. Um, 
So yeah, I will just pretend that you know this. So let's go. Okay, so this is what a channel does. So imagine this is a copy on the screen for A, B, and C. Okay, easy peasy. So, of course, for you to be able to play like the same song in the different channels, you need a copy of it. One on each. Okay. So you could do like, go from here to here. Or from here to here, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, big question, number one. Uh, how to put the tracks there so you are able to do this and be and being seen? So, as you can see here, the Ableton project is always playing. So this means that you always have like a grid and if you press play, this imaginary grid, um, well, the track gets synced on top. So I think that's the main difference between using this, I mean, difference number one, but I don't uh, know. One of the main difference is that uh, with Ableton, you press play and there's like this imaginary grid where the tracks fall on top. With the CD with a CDJ, if I'm not mistaken, you cannot do that. It's like tractor. You have one track, and this track is like the master track, and then other all the, all the other tracks sing to this one. So with tractor, uh, I played with tractor for a while, and what I was doing is like having a track that is like a loop of a metronome and then link all the tracks there. But for some reason, it was a mess. That's why I love like this system, because the, um, the grid in Ableton, the internal one, you don't see it. Then you edit all the tracks to this grid, and everything is perfect. With Tractor, Think about, I mean, if you didn't know about what I told you now that I do of having a look with a metronome, you try, I mean, you have like a track as a master track and it's never perfect. You always need like to do an adjustment, but we are DJs, we can do adjustments, it's fine. But the reason I use this is because I don't want to sing. Uh, because... One of the things that you can do with this is that you have like an ambient for three minutes and then you get in with three tracks if you want to. And you don't have to be like thinking like about syncing. And that's an advantage if you want to do that, you know. Uh, again, this is your choice on how you want to play. It's not that this is like better or not, but I want to be able to do that. I want to be like in ambient mode and then get in with a thousand things. So, yeah, this is one of the things why Ableton is, like, so good to do this. Uh, so, yeah, we have, like, this, and we can play on top of this imaginary grid. Let's check different tracks. Okay, this one is on blue because it doesn't have a kick. It's ambient. I will speak about the colors later. You can see like every measure, every bar of a 4-4, four, four, I press play and the track falls there perfectly. This is because of this thing here on the top. And I have, in, uh, I have it um, with one bar, but you can do like two bars. If you do like half a bar, it can get tricky. I think the most comfortable one is one bar. So you can be like, 
I don't know, like this. I don't know, I think I think it's the most comfortable. But yeah, one bar or two, I think it's worse. Uh, what else? Mm, okay, before starting with the setup of how to do the tracks, let's check the the project again. I will explain you the color thingies, so you know it already. And... Yeah, this, I mean, I did an example here with a track of mine. So these are all tracks from Todd Fosk. <laughs> this one is from Lupaina Records. So I say hi now to uh, Jaime and Ignacio and Jorge uh, for having released an EP of mine. Let's go with... Okay, white, I call it Go when I do a track, which is like, white is like, there's a kick, there's something there. Wait. Because now I removed the stop button, I don't remember why I removed the stop button, but there's no stop button. Yellow means go plus, which is like the kick and something else. I can return always. Blue means that the kick is missing in the middle of the song. So like a drop. Uh, so yeah, basically having like hot cues. Um, so different clips of the same track at different positions of the start. That w I will show you how I do that. But for now, just so you understand the colors. And red means everything. And also like blue means that there's no kick at the beginning of the track. So in case of an ambient tracks, of ambient tracks, all of them are like this. If you want to sleep better, get this track of Todd Fox, Death Waiting Room. It's a drum solo on top of pads. And also, if you have like a track that has an intro, like this. The blue thingy uh, means that there's no kick. And the minus 16, I will explain it, I will explain later, later what it means. Uh, yeah, it means that it has like 16 bars before the kick. But there's a reason why I put that. I will show you to you later. Uh, okay. So, yeah. I will... Okay, now that you know the colors, I will show you the project uh, completely. So you see it. Uh, so the pink chunks are a way to separate the project. Okay. You will see that a lot. And the pink chunks are like the explanation of what's next. So Todd Fosk is like the my techno artist or whatever. So this is like the track from Todd Fosk. Trippy, Drug, Super Airy. Uh, no Reef, Long Drops, Airy, Death. Drops, Reefy, Party. Broken beats. So yeah, this is my way to to put it. Uh, on the left side, you have comments, okay. And these, I mean, these are audio clips, but these these are clips that I will never hear, you know. Because this 
doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't have an output. It's only a way for me to write it down. Uh, so yeah, and also the number here is because I imagine like playing in Tresor, and this is the hour in which I would play these tracks. So between nine and twelve in the morning. So of course this is like ultra destruction. Uh, we between two and three broken beats, cleaner pre-party. Yeah, as you can see, I don't have like colors for everything. It depends on the track. So every track has like different ways for me to, yeah, to play it. And yeah, so yeah, A, B, C, D. Then you have like this thing called looped. And this is actually only like a way for me to know that the clip is looped. So for instance, if I go here, I have a loop, I have a loop here, you see? So if I go, I go here. So yeah, it's only like a, a way to help me. And then you have like the, um, this thing here called J and this, I'll show you. It's like a trick of mine to avoid having this. So for instance, if I want to go up, I have to do this. Either this or pick up the K2 because I don't like touching the computer if I'm live and do like this. But it can take years if you have like 1000 clips. So there's a trick that I do that I did and these here are like dummy clips dummy clips uh, that when you play them the screen jumps there. So check the K2. If I do like this, I jump around. So I can be like at the beginning or the end, like super quick. So from one to 600 or in the middle, you know? So yeah. And the letter there is the same letter here. And I have this in another, in another layer. Uh, but yeah, if you are interested in mapping specifically, let me know and I can do like a mapping thing. But for now we go with the, with the basics. Okay, now I'll show you how to put a track uh, on one of these projects. And for that, I will take the, then from the new EP of self-released Lesserov, who's one of my uh, favorite artists and influences. This is a good example because the track starts with a kick. Then I will show you how to do this for a track that doesn't start with a kick. Okay, so yeah, first I will put like a weird name that works for me. Um, pff, I don't know. Something. I know this track is called um, Your Heart Makes a Fist. So maybe I put Heart Fist. And then this, then here I put a reference of mine. I can put like, I don't know, less set of new EP. Which then, if you buy all the tracks from less set of like me, all are called less set of new EP. But yeah, if you know how to fix that, let me know. Uh, so, number one, you put the track. Number two, press warp. Number three, Check the first transient of the first kick and put the one on one here. Number, I forgot the number. Now we have to guess the BPM and put it here because this BPM is not even close to the real one. It's because Ableton doesn't do that. You have to do it yourself. So the trick, um, I mean, there's like different tricks. Uh, if you have an ear, that works, you can do like the metronome and then press play at the same time and see. So in this case, the metronome goes faster. So it means that the track should go slower. So Ableton, I mean, there's like a math that if you know, I mean, if when you have like some practice, but when the track goes slower than the metronome, it means that you have to put the track slower so then Ableton put it like faster anyway 
it's a mess. Uh, so you can just try different BPMs. Another track of another trick of mine is like normally artists they do shit close to the 33 or close to the 57 or whatever or in the middle of the track. So for instance, I know Lesarov what he does uh, when he's close to 33. I can do like this, and here it says 45. So most probably it's 45. If I go to 57 and it falls again to where it falls, or 105, you know, it's, it's, it's perfect, almost. So most probably the track is at 145. It is. Also, I can compare with something else. So yeah. Then you have the BPM. When you have like the BPM, um, the warp mode, I use repeat. Re repeat. So basically, if the track goes slower, the wave of the track is longer, so the pitch goes down. So this is like playing a record. With digital, if you go like super slow, it might sound a little weird. All of my tracks that I have here are um, in format AIFF. -I, I don't use wave because one would be because when I use tractor, the wave doesn't work correctly. So I've is my choice. So yeah, if you use something that is not repeat. You will have to check shit about the transients. Uh, if you want to do that, per, if you want to do that for every track, I mean you will have to. Otherwise, um, it won't be like super accurate. So just do what you prefer. I personally prefer to do it um, this way. Okay, repeat. High quality fade. Blah 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 blah. So this is ready. I could, for instance, put this here and then put this in the middle. Now I have some hi-hats. I will put this in yellow. And then I could, wait, go like uh, in the middle here, go blue. and then go here again and go red with this one. So this would be like the fuel pack of hot cues. And when you have this, go and move it. Remember that if you do a change here, like, I don't know, you want to change whatever, then, or the name, hair fists, I don't know then remember to move it here, okay? But yeah, that's what I do, it's like always change A, then go to the right. Also, you have to be careful with something. This is probably one of the problems that you get with Ableton. When you put the track in and you go down with the BPM, the here, it stays on the same place, okay? So when you go down, it's fine. But when you go up, you will see that the track stops before. So then later, you will hear this. And suddenly you have this in the middle of Bergheim in front of 2,000 people. So you have to check all these things But this one, this one is fucked up. You cannot forget about this. So you have to check every clip and see that everything is fine. So now you see that this takes some time, preparation time. Uh, <laughs> from time to time I see some that are just maybe too close to the end. I should like move them. Um, so yeah. 
take that in account. Okay, we have we have this one ready. Now I'll show you how to do the the, um, the intros for the tracks that are missing the kick at the beginning. So, for instance, I have. Okay, I will take this from Artificial Conformity, one of my favorite artists also. So I take the opportunity to say hi to Gabriel Zap. Uh, also, this track is from one of my, no, so from my favorite label, Subverted, from Ibral. If you want to check it out, you have all these artists all together. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's do the same. Warp. First transient of the first kick. Always, even if you have the intro, don't don't check this um, at the beginning. I'll show you how to how to fix that. Now we do our trick to guess the BPM. It's forty five again. It's eighty nine. Yeah. Be careful with doing a double orange because then you will be like only affecting this side. Okay. Be super careful with that. Always move the gray ones because the gray one, gray, gray ones, move the whole thing. Okay. Um, okay. Here we are. Okay, this works as as this this works as expected. Um, so what we are gonna do now is do the intro. I'll show you how. So you have to keep the one on one on the first kick, okay? And what you are gonna do next is copy this, and then you go down as you wish because the one is here already, you know. So you can do a minus eight, for instance, and then I put it on blue. And then I, I always like like putting the bars because if I expect this to suddenly put the kick in, I like knowing more or less where it falls, you know. And you might think that this is like, why, do I, why don't I start putting the one before? And the thing is, um, check this out. It's like when you are here, it's like, eh, where do I put it? You don't have transients. This is like somewhere. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. So I always prefer it to do it backwards, you know, and always leave the one there. Because then I can do, for instance, uh, minus 16 and then just put it here, you know. So I have like com complete control of this. And I think that's amazing. There are like tracks. Um... Uh, that I do this like for minutes, like for a long time. Squared pusher. Squared pusher. Okay. Um, also. Anyway, it just works like a charm there are tracks that i have this for many many like this one from rasit okay this one i love the one here sorry about that <laughs> but yeah i mean i've been improving while doing this for many years so right now I just prefer to have the one. It's like super clean to have it this way. Okay. Um, all right. Now you know how to put the tracks. Again, when you have it like ready, you move it to the right. In case you do like a loop <clears throat> for some reason, this is like the most common loop that I do. Like a loop um, after the drop, for instance. 
then I would use like the loop clip, dummy clip, that the only purpose is just visual. Where are we? Also remember that if you do like a loop here, you will have it to do it here, to do it here and here also. This is also one of the things that takes like lots of time. And if you miss it, it's gonna be a mess when you're alive. So yeah. Be careful with that. Again, if you have the loop here, you also have to move it to the right. So yeah. You're gonna spend six million hours doing this. When it's done, it's easy. It's just the preparation is like insane. Especially if you are like DAing from, DAing from the first time and you have like 1,000 tracks and you have to do this. You can call your friends and everyone and tell them that you will disappear for the next nine months. Close yourself and do this. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that's it, right? Am I missing something? I mean, if you know how to do this, uh, you can already build your project. I think I'm not missing anything. I mean, this is my personal uh, way to put it here. But of course, all the color things, everything, just do it yourself as, as you wish. Uh, this is only my way, you know. Uh, yeah, then always, if you do like a change of any kind, do it from here, don't do it. I mean, now it doesn't appear because this is a copy of, I don't know, it's a mess. Uh, but any change, do it from here, okay? Don't do it from... Don't do it from here with the project open because the, um, yeah, this will freak out and break everything. What the hell is this? Sorry. Uh, but yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, if you do like a change to a track, so for instance, um, from the new ones, like this one, I want to remove the original, I don't know, I want to remo remove this, for instance. If you have this track inside the clip already, the Ableton freaks out and then it has to find it and whatever. So if you do like a change, do it always from here, okay? Find the track and change it here. All right. Um, then you can see that the CPU is not even suffering. You are only like playing tracks. Um, but always check the buffer and just choose whatever fits you. What do I have? Okay, it's, that is not relevant what the, the one I have right now because I use this for making music, but I could go like all the way up because when you like press play, you press play before before a bar. So it doesn't make sense if you if you have like some latency. Okay, uh, this set, uh, I think we are done. I just want to be sure that I'm not missing anything. Um, yeah, if you want to see like how did I do like the, the looper or the FX twin sheet? I'll show you how it sounds. And stuff like this, or I have like a reverb. And I don't know, if you wanna know also the gain, I just, uh, cut it only to minus five and five, so it's not dangerous. Uh, the high shelf moves like this. And what else? What else? The high pass filter, where are you? Here. So yeah, this is like the dynamic reso. You can change everything here, but if you have questions, I will, do, I will just do another video for the mapping. Uh, yeah. So, Guys, I think that's it. It's more than 30 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, it's how it is. Uh, thanks for watching. Questions or whatever, you tell me. If I forget something, I will put it left later with PostPro. 
And yeah, happy DJing. Chao, chao.